This is my brother's girlfriend's story. She doesn't have a Reddit, but I told her about this subreddit. And she wanted to share her story because it's creepy and it's also something to learn from. I go to school in a big city and it's one of the least safest cities in the United States. I chose this school for nursing, definitely not for the location. I live in a row house, or that's what I think we call it, off campus with four other girls. It's cheaper and nicer than dorms, or so we thought. I guess you get what you pay for. We're all girls and sophomores in college, and as you would guess, we'd go out and drink and come back and do things we don't remember. We had just started, and our rent was in August. There was three floors plus a basement, which was padlocked by the owners. Understandable. We'd definitely have parties down there to avoid immediate cleanup if it was open. The house was great. It was an amazing location to school and work. I'm a CNA who works odd hours, which is important for later. It was not expensive at all and in pretty good condition. I'd never lived with that many people before, just one roommate. So before we definitely knew it was one of us that had to misplace or change something. I started to notice that my snacks we either had were half gone or completely gone. I was getting annoyed, but a house of many people, it's too much to work and go figure out who ate what and who ate at what at what time, so I just ignored it. So slowly as girls do, we start making comments about someone eating our food, but just passive aggressive, you know, college girl stuff. We would let it go for most of the time, because who wants a whole house fight? I work until about 11pm in the NICU, when I get home about 11.30, mostly on weeknights, I would start to notice our pans left out or snack wrappers left around. I thought it was odd because none of my roommates had done that before, but just thought, oh, probably drank a bottle of wine, then went to bed and just forgot about all this. Continuously making excuses for the actions and the things going around at our house. My roommates start making comments as well. And this is where we start asking because it was getting annoying that all of our food was going to be gone and things just being left out. I knew it had to be one of them, but who wants to admit that they ate someone else's snacks in college? Snacks are a high commodity. So we all chalk it up to the girl who always smokes and eats her weight in food. But she continued to swear that it wasn't her. This goes on for two months. It got more obvious someone was clearly taking everyone else's food. Definitely has to be the girl who always smokes. I see her eat a whole snack pantry in one night. But I wish it was her. One night at work. I was about to get off, but in a situation happened, and I didn't end up leaving until around 12.30. I took the bus home. I got home and was about to just collapse. I was so tired, I just wanted to go to bed as soon as possible. When you walk in our front door, the stairs are directly in front of you, and you can see down the side into the kitchen. I walked in and saw someone in the kitchen, but was way too tired to say hi, and thinking I could end up in like a 30 minute long conversation about nothing. So I ignored them and just went straight upstairs. When I got to the second floor, I noticed all of my roommate's doors were closed, which always means they're either in their room for the night or asleep. I don't know why, but I got a weird feeling. Something that made it click. They were all asleep, right? I texted our group house chat, asking if anyone was in the kitchen. I felt stupid for even asking, but only two responded and they both said no. The others were asleep. I knew it wasn't any of my roommates down there at the moment, so I immediately dialed 911, but I didn't press call yet. I crept into my roommate's room across the hall. Thankfully, or maybe not thankfully, she didn't have her door locked. I whispered, telling her that someone was inside the house. She gave me the wildest eyes ever and almost looked like she was about to cry. She wasn't even suspecting anything like I did. For reference, it was a very bad area, and there were shootings in the house two doors down only weeks earlier by another intruder. She mouthed to me to make the call. The whole time we were completely dead silent, and we really didn't hear anything. I began to question myself, thinking, did I really see anything? It was a long day at work, maybe I just imagined it. I regretted that I dialed, thinking I'm going to look like an idiot when they show up and I was just tired and daydreaming. We explain what's going on, and they tell us that they'll send someone as soon as possible, which thankfully ended up being pretty quickly since it is a big and dangerous city. The police show up, and I didn't even want to go downstairs, 
but the operator confirmed it was them, so I did. The whole time, I could swear the operator could hear my heart beating. The police come in and look around, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my god, I'm so dumb. They ask if there's any other floors, and we tell them technically there is, the basement, but it's padlocked, so no. They end up checking the basement just in case, and well, they were right. A man had been living in the padlocked basement. The lock was pulled off the hinges, and just kind of propped up against the wall. We'd never even looked at that though. We rarely even went out back. The guy had taken a comforter of one of my roommates out of the hall closet, had a mattress from God knows where, and all of his clothes were there. He was the one moving and eating all of our stuff. He would come out in the middle of the night and do it. He started getting really, really comfortable. I don't know if he was drugged out or what, but he forgot to clean his tracks, and he really started to not care. My roommates and I have pretty consistent schedules during the week, probably letting him think that any time after 12 was good to come out. We never slept with our individual doors locked, and that's what freaks me out the most. He had access to every single one of us at any given moment, and we would have had no idea. When he did get arrested, I was the only one to go down and look. I don't know why I did, but I wish I didn't. So yeah, let's never actually meet. Okay, so first let me say I debated about posting this here because I may be overreacting about a few weird things that have happened. But then I decided to go ahead and post it anyway and see what you guys think. Please tell me if I'm overreacting. I won't be offended at all. And just tell me if I'm being silly or if there's really something actually going on here. First off, our house has a basement slash crawl space that's only accessible from outside. There's a door that's directly underneath my bedroom window. It's about 10 feet from the bottom of the steps, leading to the back deck. It's a fairly large space. It has a dirt floor and concrete walls. Clean. Big enough for a grown man to stand up in, actually. Until recently, it was half full of junk. Mostly just from our kitchen renovation, like paint cans and equipment, extra floor tiles, and such. We actually did have a padlock on it, too. We asked our yard guy to do a little bit of extra work. That included cleaning it out completely. When it was empty, we didn't bother putting the lock back on it. It has a sliding bolt that keeps it closed in addition to the little loop thingy that you put the padlock on. So we just slid in the bolt and called it good. There was no point in actually locking it, right? A couple of weeks ago, my boyfriend was out on the back deck, emptying the recycling bins and noticed the door was open. Someone could have easily left it open, but the sliding bolt is a bit rusty and wouldn't easily come open and certainly wouldn't have opened up on its own. So we went and checked it out. Nobody or nothing there, still completely empty. So he thinks, well, okay, someone was poking around, didn't find anything interesting, and just left it open. He did tell me about it and reminded me to keep the doors locked when he isn't home. A few days go by, and I'd let the dog outside and he ran straight to that door and started sniffing and scratching at it. Then I noticed it was slightly open again. So I went in this time, walked around, nobody, nothing. Let me also add here that we have a lot of trees and wildlife on our property, including raccoons and groundhogs in addition to a ton of squirrels. We also have one huge oak tree that overhangs the roof, covering the master bedroom so it's nothing unusual to hear squirrels and other animals on the roof with their little pattering feet and scratching sounds. Yesterday I was home alone, laying in bed reading a book, and the house fell completely silent. Usually the dog will lay in bed with me, but... He was acting fidgety. He was pacing back and forth and just acting weird. I was hearing the usual late afternoon noises from squirrels or whatever else animal was on the roof. But then, I hear noise that is clearly a crawl space door creaking open. It's directly underneath my window to the right. So I stand up, creep over to the window, crack the shades a tiny bit to peek out. And I see a man starting up those steps to the back deck, having just exited the crawl space. I immediately said, oh, no. Dropped the shades 
and headed back up the hall directly to the floor he was heading for to confront him. At that same moment, my dog went nuts, barking, and beat me to the door. By the time I got there, he was nowhere in sight. I only saw him through that window for a second, and I only saw him from the back as he was heading up the stairs. He was wearing a hat, so I couldn't even have said what color his hair was. Guessing my dog scared him away, but what the f was he doing walking up my porch in broad daylight with someone who was obviously home? If he planned on knocking on that door, that would have been weird. No one would knock on that door anyway. People come to the front of the house, not walk all the way in the back to knock on someone's door. That's weird. I waited a few moments, got my pepper spray out of my purse, and went to investigate. Sure enough, that crawlspace door was open again, but no one inside. When my boyfriend got home, he put the padlock back on it. Then he got my gun out of the safe where it's been for years, and insisted I keep it under the mattress on my side of the bed. I only agreed to that after he loaded it with rat shot, because I don't think I could actually shoot a human being, not even in self-defense. And the rat shot won't do much more than scare someone with the noise of the gunshot. He was highly pissed that I went to the basement by myself to check things out. But I'm more angry than I am frightened. I don't really know if I'm overreacting. That just because someone had been inside the basement a few times. I automatically assumed the man was responsible and meant some form of harm. Fairly certain that's where he came from. Because I definitely heard that door open just seconds before I saw him on the steps. With it locked up now... If someone had been routinely in and out, that should stop. Like I said, I don't know if I'm freaking out over nothing, but we're definitely keeping all of the doors locked, just in case. This happened in my junior year of high school when I was 17 years old. For context, this isn't the type of story to make you jump out of your seat type of story. It is, however, one of the creepiest and most awkward moments I've ever had. So anyway, this happened about two weeks ago, just when school was getting out. I was home and had just finished up my final project for school before the summer. Nothing else to do, and still having motivation to be productive, I thought I'd drive around the area to deliver some orders and make some extra cash. So I'd get in my car and drive around town, doing orders left and right for several people. They were pretty simple for the most part, the restaurants not being too far away. I'd say I did this for about two hours or so before it started getting late. Most of the stores were closing and I decided to head back home. However, I got one final notification from DoorDash telling me that someone was requesting the delivery inside the area. I was annoyed, but it wasn't that far at the end of the day, so I bit my lip and accepted the delivery. After getting the food, I drive over to the location pull up to a one-story, small home. Now, the area I was in wasn't the best, and it was kind of creepy, to be honest. But I knew I had to get it done in order to go home. I get out of my car and put the food on his doorstep, as requested, then took a picture for proof. After leaving, I hear the door unlock from behind me and see someone step outside. Standing in front of the door is this tall, linky man wearing this huge jacket. It made no sense as it was nearing summer, and if you live in Florida, you know how hot it gets. But it really wasn't any of my business, so I just told him to enjoy his food and went on my way. But as I'm walking over to my car, I hear him tell me to wait, that he had something for me. I turn around, and he goes back inside his house and motions for me to come inside with him. Most of his house was partially dark, and you could kind of see inside, and the atmosphere itself looked very strange. I wasn't about to just enter a random person's house in the middle of the night, so I politely declined, telling him that I couldn't do that and I had to get home. He said that there wasn't anything to be worried about, it was just a surprise. Eventually it got to the point where he just brought whatever he was talking about to give me outside, which ended up being a box of cookies. He claimed that he took care of all his delivery drivers and wanted to treat us to something special since we worked so hard. After handing me these cookies, he instantly started talking about how his grandma was a cook and owned this million dollar business and she'd given him a recipe. I don't know if anything he was claiming was true, but needless to say, I really didn't care. I just thanked him for the cookies and went home, where I ended up just setting the cookies on my bed. I was tired, so I decided to take a shower and just get ready for bed. I'm in the shower for a good 10 minutes and I hear my mom yelling something while calling my name. 
She didn't really sound mad or anything, just distressed and concerned. I turned off the water, wrapped up in a towel, and hurried into my room where I found my mom sitting on my bed. I instantly understood why she was so concerned. My cat had torn into the box of cookies, and I had eaten nearly half of them. She was on my bed breathing heavily, acting as if she was about to pass away at any moment. At that point, we knew that we had to get her to a vet, and the only one that was still open was about 15 minutes away. We put her into the car and floored it down the road to the hospital. We got there, a veterinarian was thankfully kind enough to take her in and run a few tests on her. These tests basically checked for any signs of poisoning or sickness she may have had. After about 10 minutes, the nurse came back out with her happy and healthy again. It turned out there were several traces of brodofacum in her system. Brodofacum is a very dangerous and very fatal chemical that was mainly used for killing rodents. Those cookies that I'd received had been laced with it. Fortunately, the nurse was able to help her recover from it by pumping her stomach with medication. With all this being said, she told us that if we'd arrived even 10 minutes later, she probably wouldn't have made it. The police were called, and I gave them the address that I delivered that DoorDash meal to. However, when they got there, whoever gave me those cookies was long gone. There was an open investigation of the incident, but after about a week, they finally called it off, as there was little to no information from that man. I'm just glad our cat thankfully survived. This happened two years ago, a typical normal day in my suburban neighborhood. My wife asked me to run to the grocery store for something. It was around 2 or 3 p.m. When she asked me, I was sitting in the dining room, which was right next to the garage. So instead of walking to the front door and then all the way out to the front of my house, to my car in the driveway, I just went out the door next to me that led into the garage. I hit the button to open up the garage door and it started to rise. I walked over to the door and ducked to walk out before it finished. I stopped dead in my tracks. There were two people standing right in front of me on my driveway. A very overweight man and a very overweight woman. This caught me totally off guard. I probably muttered some type of hello, then asked if I could help them with something. Before I had time to focus on their response, I noticed the woman wasn't looking at me like the man was. She was holding a fake baby in her arms, cradling it, and telling it to shh, shh. This left me flabbergasted. I immediately assumed they, or at least she, might be mentally disabled. I looked over to the man without missing a beat, and he asked me if I could give him a ride to the store. I made up some excuse why I couldn't take them, even though that's where I was actually going. The man's face immediately turned red. The woman never looked up at me, and I walked around them and got in my car and locked it. I hit the garage door opener on my visor and then called my wife immediately. Meanwhile, the man is glaring at me through my windshield. I quickly told my wife what was going on and to make sure all the doors and windows were locked, just in case. Before backing out of my driveway, I waited for the two people to start walking away, and eventually, they did. I asked my wife if she wanted me to stay, but she wasn't worried. She told me it was fine, that she'd still like me to go get what she needed. The grocery store itself was only a couple of miles away from my house. I grabbed the item, paid, and left as quickly as possible. Still kind of worried about the strange encounter I just had. As I was driving back home, I saw those two people walking down the sidewalk toward me. The woman was still looking down. The man saw me again, and again, got very obviously upset, and then walked out into the middle of the road in front of me. He was saying something, but I drove around him and continued back home. My wife called the local non-emergency number, and they told us that they'd send an available officer to the area to drive around and take a look for himself. I never saw them again. I have no idea if they were going house to house asking for a ride or what. A part of me still feels bad thinking they both might have been mentally disabled and just wanted to ride to the store. But the whole encounter was just too bizarre. The man didn't seem disabled, so I honestly just have no idea. If they hadn't surprised and spooked me the way he did, 
I may have given their request a little more consideration. So, to the people that asked for a ride that day, let's not meet in my driveway abruptly. Just knock at my front door next time. This is a story that happened to my mom's friend in Korea about 10 years ago. Every time I hear this story, I still get the chills. My mom's friend lived in an apartment complex in Seoul. She was a stay-at-home mother with a young daughter, and her husband worked during the days. One day, she was coming home from running errands with her daughter and got into the elevator in her building. When she got on, she noticed that there was a man wearing a yellow cap and a yellow raincoat. He kept his head low so that he couldn't really see his face. She immediately felt really uneasy and she made her daughter stand to her side, furthest away from the man. What made her feel even more uncomfortable was that when she pressed the button for her floor, there was no other lit number. And on top of that, she noticed that he was carrying something wrapped inside newspaper held close to his side. Things began to click in my mom's friend's head. She began to panic, decide to take out her cell phone and pretend she was calling home to her husband, who was obviously not really at home and was at work. She started saying things like, Oh, I'm on the elevator. I'm about to get off. Can you get the door for me? Making it seem like her husband was waiting for her at home. When the elevator did finally reach her floor, I think she lived on the 12th floor or something, she quickly got off and grabbed her daughter and started to walk as fast as she could back to her apartment. She noticed that the man also got off on her floor was slowly but surely following her down the hallway. When my mom's friend got to her door, she started to bang on it loud and shout, Hey, I'm home. Please open up the door. And then kind of pretended like he was coming to open up the door. Upon seeing this, the man in the yellow raincoat started to walk away back toward the elevator. When he seemed to be far enough away, my mom's friend quickly picked up her daughter and slid open her front door's passcode thingy and started to frantically punch in her key code. But the problem was that the buttons would make sounds, so the man would know that no one was coming to answer the door for her. He quickly turned around and started to run back towards her. At this point, she was practically screaming, and when she finally got her door to open, the first thing she did was throw her daughter inside the door. When she got inside herself, she saw that the man was pretty much now only inches from her front door, but she managed to shut it and lock it before he could wedge his hand or a weapon inside. Afterwards, looking through the door's peephole, she saw that the man was now walking back towards the elevator again. Several months later, my mom's friend was watching the news. There was coverage on the capture of a serial killer named Yu Young Chul, who used to kill a lot of prostitutes. She told my mother, that she could never forget the dread that she felt when she saw that all too familiar yellow raincoat and hat that he was wearing when apprehended. Hey everyone, thanks for listening if you stuck around to this point. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and that notification bell to be notified when future episodes come out. If you have a true scary story of your own, feel free to send it to my email or post it to my subreddit. You can stalk me on Twitter, you can stalk me on Facebook, and you can also stalk me on Instagram. All these links are below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.